So I'm Marek from Plasma Cloud and we were talking about our products, a short introduction into the hardware side and also the console. We will do an extensive demo um, and a Q&A session towards the end with questions um, from, from all directions. Um, we, um, as probably many of you know, we have a strong background at OpenMesh, uh, just as a quick intro here. Um, I myself worked at OpenMesh for over seven years before leaving the company in uh, late 2016. And we recently started Plasma Cloud as the Open Mesh offering uh, changed drastically in uh, just just a short while ago. So we have been very busy to build a complete replacement for Open Mesh um, and its hardware and cloud offering, which was uh, very well priced, very affordable, um, and allowed a massive um, ease massive improvement in uh, monitoring and managing all these devices in various locations. So our key, our key goal and our key product is the cloud and um, the hardware that goes along with it. So you may be familiar with Open Mesh or not, but I'm, I will just cover the basics a little bit so that we have everybody on board. So our hardware is generally access points, Wi-Fi access points and uh, switches that you can install in various locations like um, hotels and restaurants, bars, um, offices, and even education. And all those devices are connected to the cloud, are centrally managed um, and monitored, including alerting and notification, um, and also allows troubleshooting. So key features, key aspects that we try to retain from OpenMesh are about easy setup, easy plug and play. You just unbox the devices, you plug them in and off you go. Um, everything is cloud managed. You have nothing um, to install at in the site that you are managing and you can drive away a hundred miles and you can still see what's going on. You can still manage all of those things. Um, and we will dive into details later what uh, the remote access capabilities are and how the monitoring works and what the system will alert you and um, what, what is there an option that you can do, how to react. Um, we support a couple of, or quite actually a quite range of access points uh, from Open Mesh to bring over into um, our system for starters. So if you have existing open mesh installations. Um, we make it very easy, and I will also demonstrate that in a little bit, um, to bring those devices over to our cloud. Um, that involves the data import as well as um, an automated firmware upgrade so that those existing open mesh models um, can be used via Plasma Cloud. And um, of course, you can have a mixed network. You can add um, our own hardware to those migrated devices to make the transition easy. You can also, of course, uh, have standalone open mesh uh, networks or Plasma Cloud, um, depending on uh, your preference and the needs of your customers. So I think we um, shall quickly dive into our own hardware uh, products. Um, those that are familiar with open mesh will um, notice that many of those devices um, are like modeled after what Open Mesh offered. So we have a very low cost offering below $100 retail price. That is um, basically the OM2 PHS, which was a dual stream single band device um, for everyone that just has budget concerns. Um, and needs a lot of devices to be installed and, and doesn't need the biggest performance uh, that you can get of high end, out of high-end devices. Um, of this model, we also have an outdoor version um, that comes with two external antenna connectors, um, allowing you to uh, replace the antennas that come with the model um, and install sector antennas or anything that's more allows a wider range or more focus beam uh, for outdoor installations. Our models are mostly outdoor ready, IP55 rated. Um, so you 
wouldn't want to expose them directly to the weather, um, the sun and, and the water, but you can install them outdoors. Um, and if they're well protected, then they will survive a long time. As the mid-tier model, we have a dual band device that um, operates on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band. It's Wi-Fi um, AC, 11 AC, the current Wi-Fi generation. Um, that is mostly for indoor installations. Um, it still comes in an IP55 rated housing, uh, but the commonly it's commonly installed indoor. Um, and um, it has the same housing, the same look and feel as the low end model. That's why the image looks the same. And then we have a high end, a high end model that is very similar to the A62. It has three radios built in one 2.4 gigahertz radio and two 5 gigahertz radios um, where you have different channels that you can configure on these 5 gigahertz radios and thereby manage many more Wi-Fi clients in parallel as you spread them out over the spectrum. So all our devices come with different um, mounting options. So the um, PA300, so our low-cost device, um, comes with um, mounting options to, for ceiling mount, for pull mount, for junction plate mount, um, to make it really versatile. Um, for those that are familiar with OpenMesh, I think that's um, very, very close to what OpenMesh had um, and makes these devices very, um, very suitable for all different scenarios that you may encounter when installing um, at a new site. Our high-end model is not IP55 rated. Um, it has these air vents that you can see. Um, and it is also not suitable for junction plate mounting, but it comes with T-rail mount pieces for ceiling mount, and it also comes with a wall mount piece. Um, so it is almost equally versatile in the installation. Um, on the next slide, we can see a quick overview um, over the hardware features. Um, we will be sharing this slide deck, so um, I will not be spending too much time in, in those details, but for easy comparison, um, here you see the various hardware features. Um, you can also check our website. We have details, data sheets, photos, um, and other marketing material that, that you may be interested in. So on the switch side, we offer four different switches um, from small to high end over medium um, switches that are the latest um, of the switch, switch development that, that's out there and still affordable. So the small eight port switch is basically the desktop version um, of what you can find. You have PoE on all eight ports. You have no SFP, no SFP plus. Um, you can easily support a number of the low end Wi-Fi access points. Um, of the higher end, uh, you, your limit with this budget of 55 watts will be reached you know, when you operate one or two devices. So on the mid size switches, we have the 24 port switches and there we offer a um, half power version and a full power version. So the half power version comes in with a PoE budget of 250 watts, whereas the high power uh, model comes in 410, uh, which basically allows you to operate our devices at about um, our low end devices. You can, you can power 24, up to 24 and on the uh, higher end, about half of that. The high-end model also comes with SFP plus ports, whereas the low-end model uh, comes with SFP. So that's 10 gigabit fiber is SFP plus, for those who are not aware, and one gigabit uh, fiber is SFP. Uh, four ports of, on all of those um, so to offer maximum performance. And then our latest and highest uh, high-end model is the 48-port version, which comes with four SFP Plus ports and 48 gigabit Ethernet ports. 
and a really high PoE budget of 740 watt. Um, those are for massive installations and, and for control. So at a quick glance, we have a table here again to compare the various features that I rushed over here. Um, again, details are also on our website and the various data sheets. Um, we can discuss that um, if, if you have questions afterwards, but um, let's, let's move on to the console and um, the UI deep dive. So, um, Nicole, can you open um, the demo console? I think we, we just dive into the yeah into the demo here. So we have a a demo console which you can also open on your end. It's just demo.console.plasmacloud.com. You can anyone can log in with the credentials. Um, of username demo and password is also demo. Um, this is static. It's a static snapshot of existing networks that allow you to browse and see the capability of our cloud console and see what all the features are that um, you can manage and monitor. And um, it may also be useful when you're talking to customers, they have specific questions um, as to what the product is capable of. So on the top right, you will see um, the list of organizations and networks that are available. In this demo, we have one organization and that one organization comes with two networks. Um, that is simply a grouping um, that we allow. So you can create as many organizations and networks as you like, and you can group them um, again to your liking. Um, so organizations are typically used to find or to group networks by maybe by customer group or by specific purpose. It's a way to find networks and and uh, and not get lost when you manage um, a lot of different sites and and uh, installations. So in this case, we're looking at a network that is installed in Northern Ireland. If you zoom out, Nicole, then you can see on the map that this is somewhere close to Belfast. It's a hotel um, that did an installation last uh, year, end of last year, and allowed us to um, pull them in into this demo. They have about 70 devices. Um, and if we go to the access point overview, then we can um, see what the device list looks like. So you can just scroll down and, and see they have um, the majority of the devices are PA1200, so the mid range uh, dual band devices, and a couple of uh, PA2200s, which are the tri band models. Um, here you have a quick overview. You will see that the devices are online. That is the first column. Um, you can give devices names. You will see the model, and you see the IP addresses, the channels they're operating on. Um, you have the last check-in, so they, all devices um, are in touch with the cloud and regular intervals, and you can see when was the last time um, they communicated with the cloud. And then you have the uptime col column, and uh, we can see that this network is very stable. So um, the majority of the devices are online for more than two months, almost three months now, without a single reboot. Um, on the top, you see a network graph, which will show you the activity of that network. And you can choose, you have a couple of selectors to drill into details here. So you can, the first selector will show traffic sorted by SSID. So this network has uh, four SSIDs at this moment. And we're looking at the traffic that shows all SSIDs combined. Um, and the next selector allows you to select the period. Um, you have the choice between seeing the traffic of last day, last week, last month. And if we select last month, then we will see that the graph um, quickly reloads. And due to the ongoing corona pandemic, um, this hotel is closed. So there's almost no traffic going on. Um, we have a couple of devices that are still online over the last months. Um, we did a snapshot about two months ago, and you could clearly see how the traffic from um, hundreds of 
megabytes uh, per day went down rapidly to almost zero. Um, now this statistic has um, left the last month's time window, so we won't be seeing that anymore. Um, the third selector allows you to choose between traffic statistics and outages. Um, and maybe let's uh, let's select the outage here to get an idea what the outage is for. So this will basically give you at a glance um, the online, offline, and other problems that your devices may have in, in a quick graph. And so you can see that the green color symbolizes the number of devices that are online, so from 0 to 61, and we see the majority of the devices are online and fully operational all the time. Um, red would be indicating an offline device, whereas um, DNS failures or other issues will show different colors. So here you see the um, outage of the entire network, but you can also click on a device in the table. And um, once you do that, you will get the outage graph of that particular device at the same time as the network-wide outage graph. So if you have identified a particular device that has issues, you can drill in and you can try to understand why, when, um, this device had any issues. Now, in this detail view for this device, you can also see, um, again, the IP addresses, the names, you can change the names, you can change MAC addresses, um, and you can also see the firmware version. Um, if we scroll down a little bit, you can also um, see that um, you have full control on a per device level of the Wi-Fi settings. Um, that is channels, HT mode, TX power, even the mesh that you can enable and disable on a per device level if you wish to do so. On the bottom of the per device um, view, you always will find a um, graphic that indicates the device itself um, and the port view of that particular device. So in this case, we have a PA1200 that has two Ethernet ports, and currently there's one Ethernet port that is connected and one that is not. So the green one is the connected port, and the dark black port is currently disconnected. Um, this will allow you to monitor and understand how devices are wired in your network. On top of that, if a device has multiple ports connected, the a golden frame around the port will indicate that this is the port that is used as uplink port. So that is where the device finds its internet from. And when you hover with the mouse over the port, you get some additional statistics, um, like the link is disabled, um, how many devices are connected, and that may vary from um, case to case. OK. so. I want to focus your attention on a particular detail which I elegantly skipped over. So that is the assigned SSID setting here. Um, that also is a stark difference to OpenMesh um, CloudTrax, which we were asked to implement early on. A lot of customers came to us and said, well, if, you, if you're trying to do something better than CloudTrax, then how about you implement this? And this particular feature allows you to create SSIDs and assign SSIDs on a per device basis. That means you may have SSIDs which are available in the entire network. So you can imagine a hotel where you have access points um, throughout the hotel which provide Wi-Fi access to just the normal hotel guests. And then you may have a couple of access points in your conference area or in the dining area or bar area where you want to have a special offering or a special uh, network that is used for a particular conference um, with different settings and different access methods. And here you can assign and unassign those particular SSIDs on a per device level. So we can just yeah, deselect the marketing SSID um, and also the private SSID. Then we could hit save and then this particular device would no longer broadcast this SSID. And at the same time, if we click into this um, field here, it will show us the available SSID. Um, and we can just select one 
and then hit save. And then we would um, have this SSID activated on this particular device. Now we get often um, asked, how many SSIDs do we support? So as a matter of fact, um, on Plasma Cloud, you can create as many SSIDs as you like. There is no hard limit. Um, we do, however, impose a limit um, of SSIDs assigned to a device. And the reason is the more SSIDs you assign, the more um, Wi-Fi overhead that creates and has a negative impact on the performance. So you can create easily 10, 12, 16, 20 SSIDs. Um, you just have to be careful when you assign those SSIDs to particular devices. Um, I also want to uh, go to um, the next point here. So we let's go to the clients and just have a look at the client overview that are connected to these access points. Um, right now, we won't be seeing too many clients. So here we got a little window that warned us of unsafe changes, but we can um, easily discard those changes as um, this is just a demo. We cannot save any settings anyway. So here we have an overview over the um, clients, Wi-Fi clients that did connect to the network at some point. Um, we can see the MAC addresses uh, in the first column. Um, there is a name column, which is, uh, these are names that are detected based on traffic that is flowing through the network. So it may be useful, it may not be useful. In some cases, it's not available. This is an automated detection mechanism. Um, the last theme column just indicates when that particular device was last connected and to which device um, that is what the next column indicates. And um, the connection info gives you some idea as to how good the connection was. So when you have customers saying, oh, you know, Wi-Fi is slow, um, these are the things you want to look at um, immediately to understand if it's a Wi-Fi issue or a problem somewhere else. Um, again, on the top, you have a graph, a network graph that shows you the traffic statistics. Um, this is essentially the same graph as we see on the access point um, overview, with the difference that you can, um, again, you can choose sort clients by SSID, and you have uh, periods um, to drill into details, but again, you can select a client um, and we can just select any one. Yes, let's just go with the first one. And then the top graph will also contain um, the overlay as an overlay, the client information. So you can see if clients um, really download a lot, you, that will show on this graph. In this particular instance, that client wasn't very active. Um, so we can't easily spot um, the overlay here. At the same time, we can also define a particular name for this client as we see that there is no automated name connected, uh, was detected here. So we can just enter any name if we know who owns this device um, to be able to later recognize this device easily in the table overview. Um, we could just type anything. Um, and at the same time, um, then hit save. But again, it's a demo, so we cannot um, save this name here, but just to highlight the features here. Okay, let's go back to the table. And yeah, discard the settings that we were not interested in. Um, I think that's it for now. Um, we will see some of the advanced features um, a little bit later. So. Um, again, to manage your network, um, to jump a little bit to the settings. So you have organization settings on the left-hand side, as well as network settings um, that allow you to manage your various um, organizations, networks, SSIDs, splash pages, and so on. Organization settings are mainly for the name of the organization. And if you wish to use uh, Google Maps instead of the uh, default map, you can insert your key here and the whole system will switch to Google Maps for you. Um, on the network level, we have a number of um, pretty standard features paired with some 
features that um, are very unique to us. So you have a name, a network name, you can give it an address, which will help you to center the map. Um, you can configure time zones, you can leave nodes, um, et cetera. And you can configure um, the Wi-Fi access um, and, and wired access. Um, I, I want to focus your particular attention towards um, the Wi-Fi AI. Um, users of uh, CloudTrax will recognize this feature. This um, is basically a smart channel selection, which will automatically um, assign channels and HT modes across all devices in your network on a regular basis. So you can just enable or disable that. And in conjunction with the maintenance window, you can define when this automated system will perform a uh, network-wide data gathering to understand what would be the best settings for your network to maximize performance in your network. In smaller networks, um, that is probably um, not strictly required, but in a network like this one with 70 devices, configuring channels and HT modes um, in a way that they don't interfere and still offer really good performance is quite tedious. Um, and to make this problem really visible to you and all our customers, we have come up with an intriguing feature, which we call Wi-Fi topology. So if we just open that feature on the top left under topology, you see the radio frequency tab. And unlike many other solutions here, you have a quick overview over your entire network as you place it on the map um, with the various channels assigned of the devices. And here we distinguish between the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. So in the tab on the top, you can switch between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And not only can you see the channels and you could, you know, already easily spot if there are channels, if there are neighbor devices that um, have the same channels. You can click on any of those devices and a detailed view will show up. So this detailed view shows you the Wi-Fi, wi the radio frequency perspective of that particular device. Um, in more detail, the gray area highlights the Wi-Fi channels used by this device at this very moment. Um, the blue um, graphs, the blue um, circles there indicate Wi-Fi of nearby devices that belong to the same network. So here we see that from channel 52 to 64, this device is broadcasting its own um, network, its own SSID basically, and has some neighboring devices, so like 33 restaurant um, and two and seven room 771. So these are all names that you can give to your own devices. So the network owner decided to go with these names um, and this our tool will help you to recognize the Wi-Fi of those particular devices. And the signal strengths will give you an indication how strong the interference is with that particular device. And at the top, at the bottom, you also have a way to uh, filter um, the, the networks that were scanned um, to make the graph easier if you have a lot of neighboring Wi-Fi networks on this graph. And this particular instance is not so interesting as we have only a few um, networks, but we will see later in another example where there, when you have 20 or 30 other networks, it becomes really cumbersome to understand what is going on. Now, this particular network, as I mentioned before, um, is automated by our Wi-Fi AI. So once a night, it performs a scan, it automates, um, it assigns channels, HT modes. And by clicking around, you can easily check how well this assignment is actually performing. And if you do a manual assignment, you can also um, compare and see how your network is doing. And I want to 
um, select, I think, this device in, at the bottom there with the many channels, you will see, yes, the, the 59. Can you click on it? Yeah. So here we see a device um, that is a PA2200. And as it has three radios, this particular device will have two gray boxes. And these two gray boxes indicate the different radios. So you can see that one of the radios um, is operating freely from channel 52 to 64, whereas the other radio um, has a more crowd crowded neighborhood. So it has to go with one of the channels that is busy. But again, um, the entire network is automatically um, optimized overnight uh, in accordance with the maintenance window. So at this point, let's let's have a quick look at the maintenance window and, and um, go over that real fast to see um, how it works and what you can um, configure there. Yeah, so in the network settings, um, you have a visual representation of your maintenance window at the bottom. Um, it simply shows the different days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on and so forth. And the blue area will indicate uh, when this optimization, optimization will take place. And you can click on it if you want to easily modify that time slot. So you can see um, 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. the system will um, optimize for the best Wi-Fi settings. Of course, this relies on your time zone setting. Um, so be sure to make the right setting so that the, there is no confusion um, and the uh, optimization doesn't disrupt your daily operation. OK, let's uh, quickly move forward here. Um, let's have a look at the SSID settings. So in this particular network, we have four SSIDs, um, all with different settings. Let's just go with the first one, the guest Wi-Fi setting. As, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is a hotel. So we um, have a typical hotel setup where we have a Wi-Fi um, password. We do um, allow access to the network via routing mode and in LAN block uh, is enabled to prevent access to LAN resources. Here you can also configure um, the radio settings and client isolation. So if you do not want your clients to talk to each other, your Wi-Fi clients, you should enable client isolation. If you want to make this SSID specific to certain radios, um, that is where you would configure it. And you can also give it different names per radio if you wish to do so. Um, if we go to the marketing SSID, then we will also see that a captive portal is configured. Yeah, in this particular case, um, a uh, Fidelia uh, captive portal solution had been chosen um, where Wi-Fi clients have to click through a captive portal and, and fill in some information before they can connect to the network. Now, we also offer uh, basic splash pages. So if you go to the splash page below the settings, you will see that we have one splash page configured here. And it's a basic splash page. Um, it comes with a basic splash page editor where you can upload images, you can have a text, you can um, have some terms and conditions that your users have to click through. Um, you can also define um, you can define um, the landing pages that users are directed to afterwards, and you can also define um, wallet garden, which means websites that users can access without going through um, this particular um, splash page. Now, we will take a quick look at another network here, because the uh, demo office network that we have um, in our network list also has switches installed. And I want to take a few minutes to go through um, the switch settings. So on the left-hand side below access points, you can also see the switches that are installed in the network. That's a fairly recent feature, which we have um, released and made available. Um, as I mentioned, we have four different switches you can choose from which will then show up in this particular switch view. 
Um, those switches will come with their own switch traffic analysis where you can drill in, you can see outages, all the same as access points. Um, once you select the switch, you will get the detailed port view of a switch um, together with the usual names that you can modify, the IP addresses, firmware version, and the PO, PoE budget overview on the right-hand side. So you have a little um, visual representation of the PoE as it is used um, by this device. Now the port view, again, will give you a quick and comprehensive overview what your switch is doing. So the first port is used as uplink. Again, the golden um, frame will indicate the uplink um, capabilities. Then you can see that this port uh, doesn't draw any PoE. It's at zero watts. And um, that is why it's also marked as green. Um, we have a client there. We'll list how many clients are connected. If this port is connected to other switches or more clients, this number will go up. And the link speed is also shown here. Port 2 is currently not connected at all. Um, that's why it's dark. And port 3 is connected to some other device. It's just green. Again, no power draw, uh, as opposed to port 4, which draws power. So it is depicted as blue. And we can see that the device that is currently connected uh, draws about 3.9 watt. Now, port 5, 6, and 7 um, just show how this would look like if you were to disable PoE on a port. And you will have this nice icon there. It will show you, you know, no PoE can flow through this port. And port 6, 7, and 8 are currently disabled. Now, on the table below, um, you have the details of this quick overview where you can see what your ports are doing. Um, Port 1 has a little icon in the first column which shows you that this is the uplink port. Um, and you have the speed column. It shows you how much uh, power is being drawn in the third column, the number of clients that are connected, and the VLAN configuration. Now, if we click on a port, and, and we will choose a port that we have configured here. So let's go with port 3. In this particular case, we configured this port to go for a manual speed um, of 100 Mbit because the connected device had some auto detection issues. So we had to go with a manual configuration here. Um, in this configuration, we can also enable the link uh, entirely or we can um, disable the link or we can enable disable PoE. Um, let's go back to the table and have a look at the VLAN configuration. Now, for the VLAN configuration, we have um, really spent a lot of time thinking about how to make this visually um, easy to grasp how your VLANs are configured um, in your network. So, at the top, you have a VLAN selection drop-down menu. And that is simply showing you the amount of VLANs that have already been configured in your network. And each VLAN can be given a name. So in this case, we have um, a test VLAN and we have a um, maintenance uh, VLAN configured. Or we can also easily add a new VLAN by pressing on the plus button. Um, or we go to the detailed VLAN settings but as a quick way, we could enter a new name and give it a new ID and create a new VLAN and just configure right here. Again, we can't hit save because it's a demo, but that is what this would look like in your real world setup. And then we can select to which port this VLAN should be assigned. And we have simply two states where you can have a default VLAN or you can have a lot allowed VLAN. Default VLAN just means here we tag an untagged traffic that isn't tagged already. as indicated by the blue color. So we can see that port five and six are currently default VLAN for this particular VLAN ID. Uh, whereas port one, two, three, and four are not default VLANs, but they allow tagged packets 
to enter the switch um, if they're, but only if they're tagged. Now, if we switch to um, another VLAN, we will see the configuration of that particular VLAN. And we see that this particular VLAN uh, maintenance also allows one, two, three, and four um, to go into this switch, whereas five and six don't have any assignment at all. So this VLAN will not be allowed on this particular port, whereas seven and eight are the default ports for this particular um, VLAN. Okay, um, I think that's it for a quick glance. I, I want to showcase another feature which we also have recently shown, and that is um, settings history. I think for that one, it's better if we go back to the office at the hotel network. And this particular network, uh, this particular feature, sorry, um, allows you to keep track of changes that were made in the past. So we could go to the network settings. This applies equally to organization settings, SSID settings, um, device settings, where our system keeps a record of the set of the savings, the settings as they are saved um, over time. So you have a little um, option button on the top right where you can select settings history. And once you select this option, um, the history is loaded and you will see on the right hand side a historic view of changes that were made in this particular network. So you will have a date, you have a quick overview of how many changes were made. Um, and if you just select any of those uh, historic changes, yeah, just select that one, um, you will see on the main window that you will have a highlight of which particular setting was changed in the past. So you can go through your history and if you realize that a customer says, oh, my network stopped working, here you have a method to go back and see what was changed and when, when things stopped working. You also have the option to restore settings um, via the restore these settings button. And that will simply make the settings as they were in the past, your current new settings. So if you want to go back to a certain state um, as it was in the past, you can easily do so. And in this mode, um, you cannot make any particular changes. This is really just a view mode of what was going on in the past. So if you want to go back and just edit whatever you want to edit, you have a back button on the top left, and then you you leave this historic view mode, and you see the UI as you saw it before. There are many other things I could go into detail here, um, but we are um, about 10 minutes towards the end. I think it's a good moment to take questions now. Um, and. Um, and if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out. Um, even if we don't have time now or, you, or these questions come to you later, feel free to explore our demo yourself. Um, it's, it's publicly available, as I mentioned in the beginning. Um, and either contact Streetwave or contact us directly through our support. Um, we're very happy to take your questions and suggestions. Um, this product has only achieved, you know, what this this rapid success through the feedback, the early feedback that we've gotten. So we're very open to any suggestion um, questions that you may have. So Angela, um, how do we how do we see those questions um, that may be asked in the chat? I'm not really familiar yeah. with this. I see them here, so I will okay, be. Okay, you see them, right? Um, so we had a question that came up. Um, they're asking if you're adding any SM, SNMP features to switches and Wi-Fi. Yes, so our switches already come with SNMP. Um, our access point currently don't have SNMP. Um, we did hear this feature request quite a number of times, so we have it in the pipe. Um, so it will certainly be available um, 
later this year, I suppose. Okay. Is there time-based settings to turn Wi-Fi internet off and on on a time schedule? Yeah, currently we do not support this feature, time-based scheduling. Um, we are aware that um, other platforms offer this. We want to, our plan is to offer a general scheduling mechanism where you can either disable Wi-Fi on off or you can disable ports on and off and basically to just schedule many more things than just Wi-Fi. Um, it's probably um, landing in Q3. It's under development at this moment. Okay. Next question. Can I convert my existing OpenMesh APs to run on the Plasma Cloud system? Yes, that's a very good question. So as I had mentioned before, we do support um, almost all of OpenMesh um, access point models that were out there. Um, we um, we have a slide deck. You can also later check our support documents um, on our um, support website. But what I want to show here in the demo is if you have your account here and you have created an organization um, and you, you go to the network um, selector on the top right, um, you will see that here you can either create a new network or you can import from CloudTracks. And that is the method that we generally recommend to everyone. So once you click here, you can input your CloudTracks API key and CloudTracks API secret. That is something you can retrieve from um, the CloudTracks user interface. And we have a detailed guide step-by-step -step, telling you um, what to do and how to get there. Um, there is a link here. Um, we, we don't have time to go into that. But there's a detailed guide that explains how you can get this key in secret. And once you put it in here, um, our system will retrieve your network list um, from, um, from this UI. And then you can select the network um, as it existed on CloudTrax. And you can just press the import button and it will fetch all your data and will also try to migrate um, all the access points in an automated fashion. You may have to wait for this migration. You may have to wait one or two hours um, for the devices to actually switch over. Um, but other than that, it's fairly automated and fairly simple, straightforward to achieve. Okay, I think we can go to the next question. Okay, thank you. Um, they're asking, is it possible to see who has made the changes and then under the new settings history? Yes, yeah, so currently we don't have the user yet, um, but it's scheduled for the next release to also export the user because we have heard that question many times since that feature was released. Um, so yes, it will be available very shortly that you can see which user has made those changes. Great, thank you. Um, next question is, what is the advantage of the Qualcomm processors on the APs? What is the advantage of the Qualcomm processors? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what we're comparing with. I'm, I'm trying to give a very general answer. If that doesn't satisfy, maybe the person asking can, can clarify in what direction um, that is going. So um, most, most of our access points, uh, if not all, use Qualcomm Wi-Fi um, chips. and. The reason why is simply a, um, a comparison between feature set and price point. Um, same as Open Mesh. I mean, we are very aligned with the Open Mesh philosophy to try to offer um, a really good feature set at a low price point. So we cannot simply go with any chipset that may, su may support really great features, but comes at a really high price where you would have to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for one access point. So Qualcomm typically offers a really good compromise between feature set and price point. And that is why we typically um, go with Qualcomm. At the same time, we're not necessarily tied to Qualcomm. So every time there is um, a new Wi-Fi chip um, out, a new generation of Wi-Fi becomes available, we do look at various chipsets and we test um, various chipsets from range to performance to feature set 
um, before we make a decision um, um, if, which ship set we go with. Okay, thank you. Um, is there advanced reporting options specifically showing the number of clients per day, week, month, or et cetera? Yes, so if we go, um, we, we just we just ran out of time. So if we go to the client overview, um, you have the same um, selector on the top where you see activity uh, per day, per week, per month. And on the right-hand side of the graph, you see the active clients. And if you drill in, um, you can also see this per access point. If you go and select an access point, you will have the overview of per access point, how many clients were active in that particular uh, period of time. Okay, and then we'll um, end it with one more question. Mm -hmm. If I'm a current OpenMesh user, what features will I find in Plasma Cloud that are more features rich than Cloud Tracks? Yeah, um, actually, it's it's quite a lot. Um, I yeah, we had we heard these questions before. Maybe we we try to come up with a document at some point. So um, we have, as I mentioned, we have per SSID assignment, um, which CloudTracks doesn't have. Um, we have a lot of visualizations that I didn't have time to go into as the um, one example is the radio frequency visualization. We have um, an advanced mesh visualization. Um, we're also coming up with a layer two visualization, which just shows you the mesh, uh, sorry, the switch view, um, how switches are cabled and all of these things. Um, we allow unlimited number of SSIDs. You can name them in any way. Um, we have splash pages that are associated with organizations. So you don't need to recreate splash pages for every SSID that you have. You have SSIDs, uh, splash pages you create once and you can just re reference them uh, in various networks, in various um, SSIDs. We have a marketplace, um, which is a whole big concept that um, would fill another hour um, of, of a presentation. In a nutshell, it allows third parties to integrate their service with us. Um, and then you can, as a user, you can click, you can click and select and just go with the service instead of manually um, researching the internet for different services and, and hope that they are compatible. Um, it's a whole list actually. Um, and we're trying to um, go beyond what OpenMesh and CloudTracks offered. Um, simply because time has moved on and, you know, since we had a fresh start, it allows us to do things differently uh, right from the start. It's easier than doing those kind of things later. Okay, thank okay. you. Um, so that's basically all the time that we have. If there are any more questions that do arise or if we didn't get to your questions or get them answered, we will be sending out um, this recording to everybody. So you can go ahead and please reply back to us and we will go ahead and make sure we get those questions answered for you guys. Uh, Merrick and uh, Plasma Cloud, thank you again for taking the time and doing the presentation. Um, we look forward to um, doing more webinars with you guys and all the attendees that attended. Um, if there's any last minute things that you wanted to add, Merrick, please go ahead and do so now. Um, no, as I said before, thank you very much for your attention. Um, feel free to reach out to Streakwave or to us directly. We're very happy to take your feedback and, um, and go on this journey together. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Have a great day.